right. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Roxanne. It's been a little bit since we uh, got to work together. Yeah. Yeah, you know. You. And um, unlike, unlike a lot of authors, you and I, we got to work together on two books pretty much simultaneously. <laughs> yes. I, I am ambitious. Uh, one might say a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Quite possibly. Well, let's, um, because it's not usual for us to do two books at once together. Do you want to kind of explain how this second book came about? Well, so I was working on Quilt Out Loud and Quilt Out Loud required a lot of thinking time. But I don't do sitting still and thinking very well. I do things while I think. And so I started doodling quilting designs because why not? I love Adobe Illustrator. It makes me happy. Make up some things I might use someday. And over the next couple of weeks of thinking, I ended up with 200 and I don't know how many, 200 plus designs because I doodle a lot and think a lot and I liked them <laughs> and thought maybe this could become a thing. Um, people do that. And I think I have a style that's somewhat unique, especially for um, all over motif, all over quilting styles that tend to either be stipples or cutesy, um, something that had a real modern edge to it, a real geometric core, I thought might be unique out there on the market. <laughs> it was. And I will say that I remember exactly when you came to me and you said, hey, by the way, I have like 200 and some quilting designs. Do you think there's something we can do with them? <laughs> <laughs> who has 200 and some quilting designs just hanging out but i was like sure of course we could do something with them um so we turned it into a book called quilting rhythm um and we put them all together and they are really unique um i really love them they're just they have kind of an energy that you don't see in a lot of quilting designs especially all over quilting designs uh, you can look at them for a while and sometimes you see different things in them like flames or EKG or just we kept everybody when they look at them too sees a little something different which is cool right um but I will say you're you're primarily known for being a piecer um you know for your work on quilts and activist quilts that have like a message but tell tell us a little bit about yourself as a quilter um I really think of quilting as sort of a second writing on the quilt which is why I like all over quilting is that it brings another vocabulary, another voice, or in the case of a lot of these, just a particular energy, a type of rhythm or feeling or movement that doesn't follow the piecing necessarily, but enhances it. I've never been particularly excited by yeah, doing my quilting to follow the piecing and just to fill in the spaces. I'm really interested in how the quilting adds an unexpected dimension to what is pieced or applique or whatever is there. And that that is, I will say, that is one thing I noticed when we were working together on Quilt Out Loud is that there wasn't an aspect of the quilt that wasn't well thought out and meant to be part of a cohesive whole. So when you're looking at a quilt top, like what are some of the ways you make decisions about what what quilting motifs to use and where? Um, it runs a wide sort of gamut. I mean, it's first and foremost, it's a question of what's conceptually needed. So if I'm doing a quilt about gun violence, Okay, so information will probably be what I end up using, names or data or something. Um, if it's a little less straightforward than that, it 
does become about how do I tie this together? This whole thing, the background, foreground, how do I get them to talk to each other and do so in a way that produces movement that isn't, again, necessarily say it's a text quilt. The movement isn't just following the letter forms. It's it's stitching them into the background, if that makes sense. Um, I, I'm I'm really about really interested in background foreground relationships. And I think the quilting, depending on the thread color, you know, you can pull the background into the foreground or vice versa and then use a motif to get that sort of unity. Yeah. And I, the other thing I've noticed about your quilts in particular, because I got to see the front and back of all of them, mm -hmm. uh, is that if you only saw the back, you would still begin to get a sense of the quilt before you turned it over, which was kind of interesting. It's not something I think I would think of for like quilt I was working on, but it does start to speak from any angle. It's really cool. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I am thinking really of, again, the quilting as it's as an independent component that then is part of a unified whole. You should just be able to look at the quilting and get something. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, there's another aspect to the quilting designs that you came up with that is really unique in terms of the people who will be using them so can you explain like who they're for and and who all can use them in which ways well i i thought of you know the quilting universe in sort of three audiences uh those that quilt on a domestic those that free motion on a long arm and then those that do computerized long arm for those that do computerized long arms, the files are available, the digital files for each of the motifs is available for download. So I thought of them. Um, for free motion quilters, you can print them out and use them as a pantograph or something of that nature. And, or not really free motion, you're following a pantograph, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and then for domestic quilters, they're all about, you know, I talk about it in the book, a sort of, it's about building the muscle memory of that motif. So first I suggest starting with tracing paper and just tracing it again and again and again until your hand starts to know the movement. Then practice it on a piece of just muslin or whatever a little bit until it becomes almost second nature and again a lot of these will vary slightly between the computerized version and the free motion version you might get a little more curve in there where i have a little more angle but it's still the same essential rhythm and energy um so it's really usable or meant to be usable for all different types of quilters but available or accessible in different ways. Yeah, and I think I think that's that's what's really unique about the book. There's a lot of the a lot of the libraries, including many of the ones we've done, are essentially meant for the home for emotion quilter, probably on a domestic machine, possibly on a long arm. Um, but what's cool, and this is what I think readers or potential readers should know, is that if you're planning to have your quilt quilted by a professional long armor. You can purchase a copy of the book and then the long armor will be able to take that digital file and use it just on your quilt. But then you've got the quilting motif you want. It's not super expensive um, and it looks exactly like what you see in the book, which is really cool. Which is great. And this was, you know, part of my goal was I see quilting motifs for sale at whatever price point they are individually where here it's almost a hundred of them for the price of the book, which makes them really inexpensive. <laughs> um, so if you buy the book for three motifs, you're still saving money. Um, 
And hopefully you're buying the book for more than just three motifs, because I talk about how to produce a pantograph and other things and stuff. Yeah, exactly. But that's really cool is that even if you only ever use it for a bare minimum, you've still made yeah. your money back. Um, and then, so if you were teaching a class on like all over quilting, um, what, what advice would you give, um, give quilters and especially give quilters on how to make the most of, of your book? Um, I would, you know, to me, it's all about falling in love with a motif. There are a couple I love in the book that I'll use again and again and again. Um, I think um, falling in love with that motif and then just getting to know it, getting to practice it is sort of the key. Um, do that with several, learn them and make them your own. Um, I think that's a big part of the book, especially for free motion quilters, is finding how the design fits your hands and your movement. Um, not necessarily trying to absolutely perfectly replicate something that was designed in Illustrator, but really find how it works for you. Some are much are really relatively simple to learn some are more complex but it's really about finding the way the motif works and speaks for you yeah i will say that for as long as i've known you um and the two projects we've worked on together that is absolutely <laughs> the message i've always gotten is for the love of all that is holy make it your own yeah <laughs> um because i I don't know everything. I think I've designed a lot of good motifs and I see in each one of them, a hundred different tweaks I could have done that would have made them slightly different. Now, if I did all of those, we'd have an encyclopedia. Well, there you go. That's your next project, right? Right, right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That would be, that would be a lot of, a huge undertaking, but you know, hey, We'll put it aside for another day. Maybe it'll happen. Um, Never can tell. No, you can't. And if everybody gets it and loves it, you know, we'll come back and let's do some more because it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much. Um, and you know, at some point, you're going to have to tell me which your which are your favorite motifs. I can do that. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for talking a little bit about quilting rhythm. Thank you very much.